you need that Holy Ghost fire to burn any evil. No witch can stop this church from growing. I tell you, there are places that witches cannot dare. This is one of those places. They can't try it. Except God has gone to sleep. You, you, you drive carelessly around this church, you will have stroke. I'm telling you, you, you better be careful. Because the Holy Ghost is the power of God in manifestation. And one of the ways he manifests is by what? Fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Glory be to God. Look at it. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who shoes I am not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? Somebody shall fire. How many of you, how many of you need fire baptism? You need fire baptism. Shall fire. Hear me. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, you become a naked wire. Okunerere. Anyone that touches you, touches naked wire. I prophesy to somebody, may your life wear the fire of the Holy Ghost. Take your seat. So, the Holy Ghost manifests like fire. It doesn't mean that everywhere you see fire, you say Holy Ghost. No, no, his own fire is different. His his own kind of fire is the type we saw in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. The fire that burns, but the bush is not consumed. Meaning, that is divine appearance. Divine encounter. And Moses kept his flock of Jethro, the father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of the God on, in, in Mount Horeb. Now, what happened in the next verse? The scripture recorded there. Quickly, let me go to my Bible. Studio has come with their issue. Now, the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush born with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Ordinary fire will consume anything. But this one is the Holy Ghost word, fire. He may be walking upon you, not to consume you, but to destroy anything that wants to destroy you. Take your seat, sir. Is somebody hearing me right now? I am about to release that fire. Any demon tormenting your family, any witch or witch are tormenting your family, somebody let me hear you say fire! Take your seat. Do you know that after this fire appearance to Moses, Moses that ran away from Egypt ran back to Egypt. I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, I ran from you, but now I carry fire. And I'm coming back to say, let my people. Pharaoh couldn't resist the fire of authority that was at work in the life of Moses. I am sent with that fire mantle upon Bishop David Odebo to say to someone here, today you are going free. Today you are going free. Today you are going free. Take your seat, beloved. How else do the Holy Ghost manifest? The power of God manifests like a wind. Oh, Numbers chapter 11 verse 31. And there went forth a wind from the Lord. There went forth. A wind, Numbers 11, 31, from the Lord. And he gathered quails. The Holy Ghost manifests. Everywhere. Because the wind is manifested. You can. Now he said, and then went forth a wind from the Lord. And brought quails from the sea. And let them fall by the camp. As it were a day's journey on this side, and it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and it were two cubits on high upon the face of the earth. Meaning, the Holy Ghost can gather crowds. He 
can bring anybody from anywhere. He's the wind of the Lord. And the Bible says, in John 3 verse 8, he said, the wind blow it. The wind blow it. John 3 verse 8. The wind blow it where it listed. Thou hearest the sound, but cannot tell where it's coming or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. You are like a wind. People may not be able to know how you are making it, but they can't deny the effects. They can't see anything around you, yet they see many things happening for you. Can I prophesy to somebody? I prophesy to the east winds, to the north wind, to the south wind, to the west wind, to bring in your favor. To bring in your blessing. To bring in your rewards. Hear this. By this Sunday, the wind of the Holy Ghost will blow me like quails to this church. Take your seats. The Holy Ghost. Look at it. When he came in Acts chapter 2, verse 2. My God. In Acts chapter 2, verse 2, this Holy Ghost came like a wind. He said, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, mighty, irresistible wind. I am going to ask that wind of the Holy Ghost to carry anybody that won't let your family have peace. They will carry them to bury a ground where they will not see them. Don't try that wind. I have seen that wind blow on people and they become blind. Blow on them, they become deaf. Because they won't let people have rest. But as for you tonight, that wind will blow in your favor. It will blow in your favor. It will blow in your favor. Number two, the Holy Ghost destroys yokes. I just finished number one. The Holy Ghost destroys yokes. Yoke of stagnation. Yoke of limitations. Yoke of barrenness or unproductivity. Whether barrenness of the womb or barrenness in the work of your hand. Anywhere you are experiencing dryness, introduce the Holy Ghost. And there will be a change. The Holy Ghost destroys the yoke of sickness and disease, physical sickness, emotional sickness, spiritual sickness. For example, if somebody is suffering from prayerlessness, that is a major spiritual sickness. Somebody is suffering from inability to study the Bible, that's a major spiritual sickness. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to help you out of that mess before it is too late. It destroys the yoke. Depression is a yoke, but it's an emotional problem. Over anxiety is a yoke, but an emotional problem. High blood pressure, diabetes, malaria, typhoid, those are physical sicknesses that require the Holy Ghost to be free from. Maybe somebody is under the yoke of poverty, but you are coming out. Come on, I say you are coming out. Maybe your family is plagued with the yoke of premature death. When it gets to your turn, it must stop. You will live to fulfill the number of your days. Somebody that believes in let your amen be the loudest here. Look at when the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus. In Luke chapter 4 verse 14, the Bible says, And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went forth out a fame of him through all the region round about. Hear me? People that carry the Holy Ghost don't need him be to succeed. The power from you will speak for you. But look at what that power began to do in verse 18. He said, this spirit and power is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. So, without anointing, you can preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind and to set liberty them that are bruised. It takes anointing and power of the Holy Ghost to do these supernatural things. Otherwise, when you go to hospital, they chuck you injection, they give you drugs, but yet they leave you with your sickness to go and manage it. The Holy Ghost will come to you and take away that sickness. 
by his power. There is someone here now. As you partake of this communion, any sickness that followed you here, it will die on the communion table. So the Holy Ghost is a yoke destroyer. I was angry when they called me from Benin. The family called me that the wife was pregnant and started running blood. I was angry. Because I know that thing requires power to handle. Number three, the Holy Ghost is a quickening spirit. A quickening means, to be quickened means to be brought back to life. When the Holy Ghost is in a church, he brings life back to the church. When the Holy Ghost is upon a man of God, he brings life back to the church. Back to every segment and department of the church. You just see security manifesting. See choir manifesting. Ushers manifesting. Last Sunday, I joined us before the end of second service. I was told a woman brought a pair of speakers to give God thanks for what God did for her. Second child after 21 years or 20 years. That's the power of God at work. She came to my office and was telling me, sir, there are some declarations you made that I never forgot. They saved me when I was almost dying. If you know my gifts very well, you know that God gave me vocal gifts. Capacity to prophesy. And when it prophesy, those that believe it, they see it come to pass. I will yet prophesy tonight. Somebody, as I prophesy, anywhere your blessing is tied, it will come to your house. Let me hear that amen loud at us. Take your seat. You know why? Romans, 11, Romans 8 verse 11. If that same spirit that raised Jesus from dead dwells in you. I mean, how can you carry the Holy Ghost and still be weak and be sick? If the same spirit that raised Jesus from dead dwells in you, my God. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your what? mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So weakness is not permitted to be part of your life. Pain and aches shouldn't be part of you when the Holy Ghost is upon you. Is somebody hearing me? And you can't be dull in your mind with the Holy Ghost at work. You know why? Isaiah 11 verse 2 He will make you of quick understanding. That is, he helps you understand quickly. Verse 3. He will make you of quick understanding. Look at it there. He will make you of quick. The lecturer is talking, but you are hearing beyond the lecturer. The pastor is preaching, you are hearing beyond the preacher. He makes you of quick. He gives you a smart brain. A smart mentality. You talk, people think you are a professor, not knowing you don't even have one degree. Because the Holy Ghost has brooded and ventilated your mentality. Making you supernaturally intelligent to know what you did not learn in the classroom. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. Is somebody hearing me? When the Holy Ghost came upon Joseph, he became a teacher to senators. Joseph, that didn't know the four walls of secondary school, began to teach senators in, in Egypt. Commanded Egypt by the Spirit of the Lord. This is what you will do by the Spirit of the Lord. And they did it. And Egypt got results. It makes men of quick words. If your child is having problems, lay hand on your child and blow the Holy Ghost on that brain. Say, brain, wake up. Receive supernatural intelligence. And you see that child doing well. Someone say, I hear. You know, in John 63, the Bible says, <laughs> a very, very practical way to understand the Holy Ghost. Jesus speaking said unto them, It is the spirit that quickeneth, 
John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited what? Nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirits and they are words. When the Holy Ghost back up the words of a pastor, it becomes a quickening spirit. You speak and something rises in the life of somebody. As I'm talking right now, any pain on your ankle, it will not cross that gate with you. Yeah. Young lady who cannot bend down and stand up easily, that devil is a bastard. Because you have a long way to go. It's too early to be manifesting weakness. You are going to be alive in 90 years. You are going to be alive in 100 years. So you must be strong to see that day. You know why? The stronger you are, the longer you live. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody, are you with me? Anything pulling you close to the grave. Today I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's try to begin to round up. Amen. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the fountain of joy and gladness. He's the fountain of joy and gladness. My God, he turned mourning and mourners into dancers and dancing. He clothes you with a garment of praise when you are depressed. And heartbroken. Isaiah 61 verse 3. That is his mission. To eject you. With the oil of gladness. Keep you on top. Every day. Bubbling in joy. So joy is a spirit. Depression is a spirit. So when you carry the Holy Ghost. The spirit of joy will swallow the spirit of depression. You will just be bubbling in joy. Even when you don't have money in your pocket. People see you happy yet you are challenged. Because you can't feel what the devil is doing. You are overwhelmed by what the Holy Ghost is doing. I, 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 oh my God. Somebody are you with me? I can't see that there is no food in the house. I can't see it. I am too joyful to be depressed by lack of want. I, I, I can't see a child that is not growing. It's impossible. The joy of what will happen has eaten me up. You know, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He went through challenge without feeling it. Not a, oh, this one, little challenge, you are crying. Everybody knows that you are challenged. That's not righteousness. It's, a, it's an indication that you lack the Holy Ghost. You announce your problem, you are not doing yourself well. People can pity you, but they can't bring you out of the pit. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. So you need the Holy Ghost to stay on top. One day, many years ago, somebody came and asked our father in the faith, Bishop David Oliver, he said, do you ever have challenge? Look at his answer. Maybe they came and I didn't know. Ay, 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 ay. Consume with joy. Do you think I sing because I am a musician? I sing because there's an oil of joy in my heart that forbids silence. Anywhere I find myself, I must sing for joy. The Bible says, if, if, if anyone merry, let him sing. It takes joy to be full of songs. It takes joy to be full of songs. It takes joy. If you are depressed, please go for the Holy Ghost. Somebody is blessed. If you are the one, your amen will be the loudest. You don't have money to pay house rent, you are joyful. Your children are challenged, you are joyful. Your car breaks down, you are singing. No food to eat after service, I don't care. Hey, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You sing the devil away from your environment. Hear me. I discover joyful people are always in control. Because people can't see you cry, they believe that everything is well. 
So they come and beg you, they come and borrow from you, they come and ask you for help because you are not crying the way they are crying. Jump on your feet and shout! Hey, 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 hey! Somebody say, give the Lord a shout! Lift up your hand. Let's praise him for a few seconds. Your name is you are not a man. Hey, you are the God who opened doors. No man can stop. Hey, somebody lift your hands. You are not a man. Oh, you are not a man. You are the God of Worship. Promise me you are going to dance the next three minutes. Say, I receive the garment of praise. Wave your hand and say, I receive the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise if you are here. Hey, I serve a living God, though. even the devil's no sin. Hey, I serve a living God of every morning. Say that you did it. Do you serve a living God? Everybody's in it. 
Do you know what I'm hearing? Somebody you came here worried. That worry is dead now. Somebody you came here sick, having pain. That pain has disappeared finally. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness. So, and at his right hand, he bless us forevermore. Stretch forth your hand, Lord. Inject me with joy through this communion. Let's pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Communion still was, let's come. We'll be making the altar call quickly. Just come. Communion still was, come. Point your hand to the communion table, Father. Inject me with new realm of joy, strength, supernatural intelligence, power to survive attacks, to overcome the wickedness of the weak. I need that joy in church. I need the power. Holy Ghost, quicken my mortal body. This sickness today, sickness tomorrow. Pain today, pain tomorrow. It must be over today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill my mouth with songs. Songs of deliverance. Songs of joy. Songs of healing. Songs of faith. Thank you, Father. In, the name, in Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. After this communion, anyone in need of salvation who will give you opportunity to give your life to Christ. You can't have this joy without salvation. Psalm 51 verse 12, I will restore to you the joy of salvation. It's impossible to have this kind of joy without salvation. So get yourself ready. Father, I declare the communion table blessed. Declaring that this communion become communion for power. Can I hear somebody say louder? Amen. Anything in your body or in your house that is not of God, the blood of the Lord Jesus will flush it out in the name of Jesus. May the body of Christ give you supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, sit, take your seat. Choir will be singing while the communion stewards are serving and the pastor. You come and take. <laughs>